What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is, besides the powder coating of the car, probably the biggest progress video to date for the new Pro Build E46 drift car. We have a ton of packages and <laughs> we're gonna get right to work on this thing. We have a ton of work to do and not that much time. So we have to get going. But by the end of this video, it is going to be such a difference visually, mechanically, everything that I think it's gonna be a really awesome video. So thank you guys for tuning back in. I really appreciate all the support on top of this. So you guys know Mark, he got me this snap-on rolling cart, which I love, but it doesn't match anything really that well in the garage. So I have a friend coming over to actually vinyl wrap that. We'll see how it comes out, but he'll be over here in a little bit. He'll be doing that while I'm doing the car. Should get a lot of stuff done today, so I'm really excited. Let's get this thing put into the lift bay and get right to work, lay out all the parts, show you what we got and uh, how it's gonna go together. Well, you guys didn't see it because for some reason the camera shut off, but got the car into the lift bay, about to put it on the lift. The reason I'm picking this back up though is I need your help. I have a Sony ZV-1 Mark II camera a mini SD card, and for some reason, when I start recording, sometimes the camera likes to just stop recording. So I have to pull the memory card, pull the SD card, and the issue is, when I'm in the middle of things, I don't always realize when the record button is not on, so if you guys have any insight on that, let me know down below. I'm not very camera savvy, so I don't know what the heck is going on, but it needs to be resolved because I just missed a great clip of me rolling the car over, putting it on the lift, potentially for the last time on the dolly. So, like I said, if you guys have any insight, let me know down below because I'd like to remedy this situation. All right, I have a lot of stuff to unpack, so I figured the best way to do this would be a little bit of YouTube magic. Can we just talk about how good this is? I've never had all new suspension parts all at once. It's usually coilovers, brakes, angle kit, steering rack when the old one blows out. This is a freaking dream come true. Oh, I'm fired up, fired up. This is so good. Look at this. Take a look at this. We have the Tech 53 dual drilled 514 hubs with wheel bearings the knuckles that Clark's Auto picked up for me, some powder coated red Rock Auto E36 calipers, because although this is an E46, I think I've mentioned this before, but we're running all E36 suspension in the front. I'll go over more of that later on, but let's continue on. We have the BC External Reservoir ER Series coilovers. We have the full SLR Ultra Kit with knuckle adapters, HD inner tie rods, their Lollipop F-cab bushings. With the JM Rebuild Steering Rack, I'll put his info right here. He's in Texas, Rebuilds Factory Steering Racks, does an incredible job. And then obviously the same on this side. So this car, front and rear, is going to be brand new everything. Wheel bearings, hubs, rotors, brakes, pads, coilovers, spiracles freaking everything. So I know it's taking me a while to get all this stuff together, but I wanted to make this one video, putting, making the entire car a roller, which blah, 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 it's a video title, so you already know, but by the end of this video, this car will be sitting on the ground on its own weight on wheels. So I couldn't be freaking happier. To be honest, all this motivation kind of has to do with Mark because he came in the garage one day and said, what the hell are you doing with this car? It had been sitting for probably close to a year. Got me linked up with Competitive Edge and it's been freaking hammer time since Competitive Edge. So shout out to all the amazing partners and companies that I'm working with to make this possible because this shit is really expensive and uh, I don't make a lot of money off YouTube, so. It's working with amazing partners like BC and SLR and Tech 53, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that make this build possible. So I can't thank those guys enough. This, this car would never be a possibility without amazing companies like this. So I'm gonna spare you guys the front control arm install in depth because you've seen that in the last video on the E36, very, it's identical setup. We're running E36 on the front of this. So when we get to the nitty gritty stuff I haven't explained to you or showed you guys yet, I'll pick the camera back up and uh, show you what we got going on, but this is a big day. This is a massive day. The car 
is going to be on the ground. Suspension, control arm, subframe, coilovers, everything are in. Literally identical to that because we did this two days ago. All E36 front suspension, so it's pretty similar. We are using an E46 rack though, so looks incredible. And Devin is here, vinyl wrapping my toolbox. So he, I, he like, I don't even remember how this started. You, I think I had asked you if you vinyl wrap toolboxes and you, yeah. you were like, yep, all the time. So done a bunch of them. People really don't like the bright colors. Yeah, no, dude, it looks so good. So I've been hammering away on this. He's got pretty much the whole base done already, doing just like a gloss black. Jeez, it looks so much brighter on the camera. So just, I don't know. I didn't want the orange, so we're doing it black. Uh, and then he has the lovely fun task of doing the drawers, which we're obviously just gonna do the faces. Um, but it should just look a lot nicer. So thank you, sir. I appreciate your help. And I'm gonna keep hammering away on this thing. All right, rear end is in, but obviously I'm never happy with anything I do. So I think I'm gonna pull just the trailing arms off and needle scale them and repaint them because they're pretty rusty. Looks like someone just threw a quick coat of paint on them. Unfortunately, I can't leave things like this because the front end looks so good. Probably have them powder coated, but I've been really liking to steal it. So I think I'm gonna steal it these, but I have to clean all the paint off first, so. Let's leave the arms in. Let's rip the trailing arms out, disassemble them because I'm getting rid of these dual calipers and these need to be painted. Well, you got a lot of work to do. All right, let's get these yanked out. Good morning. A uh, little change of scenery here and I took the mic off for today. Since we are going to meet up with Brian Hall. Uh, B Hall, you guys know him from Jimmy's channel. One of my good friends. He's helped me out with something really special today. So. As soon as he gets here, show you what we're doing, but I'm really freaking excited. I've spoken to some people about this, but it's not a very common thing to be done, and I think it's gonna be really cool if we can execute it properly, and Brian is the perfect person to help you with it. Hello, Brian. Hi, What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so, I didn't tell them what we're doing today, but I think we'll be, if anybody can make this work, it's gonna be you, so. Well, I, I didn't tell them, but I called you the other day and I was like, I have this idea. You're like, just bring it up here, dude. So, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You are going to help because you have the tool that I yeah. don't have and can't afford because Very few people would have that tool. it's like a $6,000 tool. Yeah, well, like the one that I got, <laughs> the one that I got is like six grand because Really? Yeah. Like I don't. What? Have, do you know why it uses nitrogen? Because it won't oxidize the plastic. Oh, is that what it is? It's just like welding metal. You need a shielding gas. Oh. Uh, I didn't explain it, but we're cutting the stock fuel tank in half. So I think we're gonna cut it like right here. So I'm only running the passenger side of the fuel tank. So we're making basically a mini fuel cell. Yeah. Just kind of crazy. Out of the factory gas tank. So. Where'd you get this idea? Chelsea and Tanner, Chelsea Denofa and Tanner Munson, they were talking about it. So Chelsea allegedly had done this back in the day, but could never figure out a way to get it to seal. Oh. 
Same with Tanner. So nobody's successfully done this. But they've <laughs> never they've never tried to weld it. Okay. So like Tanner said, he used a pl a plastic plow blade, like you know, like the thick plastic, okay. and glued it in. Um, but you know, the the fuel and ethanol obviously is going to eat the the whatever. So it's not. It doesn't eat this plastic. <laughs> exactly. So I'm hoping if we can reuse most of this plastic, we'll be in good shape. Basically cutting a lip out of the, cutting a chunk out of the top so we can hopefully roll the bottom up and seal it with the actual tank itself so we don't have to worry about trying to seal that massive gap with something that's not the OEM tank, right? It's kind of the plan. Instead of just covering it. Yeah. Hopefully folding it up. And we're giving ourselves enough space if we do have to just cover it with something, piece of the old tank or something, we'll still have room to do it, right? If we can't get the if bottom to roll up. Work, we'll just cut it straight and, and glue, glue, yeah. We said we weren't yep. Exactly. Perfect. <laughs> what is that tool, Brian? It's just a vice grip. It's just a no, it has something on it. It's not just a vice grip. <laughs> I call it a, a, like a duckbill vice grip. I don't know, it's for flattened panels out. For whatever you want to grab that's flat. <laughs> All right. Well, it's starting to get rolled up. Brian like smoothed out the top a little bit to get rid of this huge ridge. And then he's heating up the bottom in order to roll it up. And then we're going to plastic weld the whole thing. And I'll explain why we're doing this um, when I get back in the truck, but it's for a good reason. <laughs> That's pretty good. Dude, heat it up, cool it down. Plastic's a wonderful thing. Thermoplastic. That's crazy, dude. So then we'll only have to weld the three sides yeah. instead of all four sides. Yeah. Dude, that's freaking nuts. I'm impressed, dude. How did you do that? I don't know, I just came up with it. <laughs> it's real, like, that is good. It is sweet. I would have, this would have not been this nice if I had done this myself. Plastic weld, or no, hot staple. Yeah. So it actually leaves the staple in there. Yeah, and so I'll, I'll cut all these And then you just cut the nibs off. off. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. But that's gonna give us some some bit of mechanical connection besides besides the just the weld, yeah, which is probably the best the best way to do it, right? Cool. All right, hot welds are done. There's barely a freaking gap on this thing. That is so yeah, damn cool. It'll, just be a dribble. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be easier to fill with water weld when I uh, when it uh, when it leaks. <coughs> So we found out the material on this thing, what is it, HDPE? That's the type of the plastic. So this um, nitrogen plastic welder actually had the correct filler rod. We were gonna use parts of the old tank, but it was obviously really thick. So you use the filler rod. Yeah. The same, but you have to use the same material filler rod, right. correct? You can't just use yeah. any plastic you want. I'll show you the plastic weld. It came out freaking sick. And now it looks like, what are you doing? Just using the hand one and smoothing her out? Yeah. Sick. <laughs> it's good, dude. <laughs> all right, we're all done. Look at how freaking good that is. So we ended up rolling up the bottom like you guys saw, so we don't have to worry about sealing the bottom. The top is nitrogen plastic welded. Can't you can't fit in there, right? <sighs> It in there. <laughs> feels, feels awfully sealed in there. I don't know how I'm going to get out. Yeah, they got good filters. Damn, <laughs> dude. Thank you so much, Brian. Yeah. Let's go get breakfast. Yeah, I'm like, freaking starving.
Happy Sunday, mother frickers. We're back in the shop. Spent some time last night and did some tedious BS work, including cleaning, needle scaling, and repainting the trailing arms. But you guys saw, we just got the whole rear suspension in. Hold off on that. But we just got the whole rear suspension in. I didn't show putting the front suspension in because you guys literally saw me do that in the last video on the E36. And we have E36 front suspension on this car. So I'll explain really quick why we did that. The suspension geometry of the E36 knuckle is in fact better than the E46. It's above my pay grade knowing why, but it's a common, it's a pretty common knowledge thing. So grab wheel studs tomorrow, order up some rotors, but this looks so dang good. Oh, we also did the Tech 53 stainless lines. So I'm gonna make a mounting tab here. And once I order up our brake booster system, we'll do a whole brake line video, but I wanted to get the car basically a roller in today's video. So I was supposed to post this today, I apologize, but I have to wait until tomorrow to go get the wheel studs and then we'll be able to make it a roller, which is freaking sick. And then for the rear, it's pretty simplistic. We have the Tech 53 dual drilled hubs, some sort of lower and upper control arms I believe will be switching to SLR. We also will be switching the subframe bushings to SLR, but I wanted to get all this in the car so we could mock everything up I got the fuel tank in the car last night mocked up. It fits freaking perfect. I'm waiting on some mounts for the reservoirs that should be here today, but look at this. We threw the T's on this thing. Just, I had to do it. I had to freaking do it. And uh, I heard Jimmy say in one of his videos the other day, mid build motivation. If this doesn't give me motivation seeing this car like this, I don't know what will. It just. Let's take this in. All right, I'm gonna keep tinkering away. We will f pick this video back up tomorrow when we get the wheel studs and we can put the car on the ground on tires. It's been over a year since we were able to do that. So we're making progress and I couldn't be happier. Powder coating this chassis was just the motivation I needed to get this thing going. So check. Okay, since the last time I picked up the camera, I went and got wheel studs. I swapped the Tech 53 rear wheel hubs out and put all the studs in, threw some wheels on. I wanted to get it to a stage where it actually looked like I did something um, because this video has dragged out for a handful of days now. Um, just waiting on parts and stuff. And to be honest, that's real life. That's how this stuff goes, unfortunately. Let's get this thing put down and see how it looks for the first time ever. We freaking did it, boys. The rear is skyjacked, but how freaking cool does that look? All right, so the test wheels we have on are 18 by nine and a half with a 285. We're obviously not gonna be running a wheel and tire this big, but it looks pretty gnarly. And then we have the same thing in the rear. Uh, obviously, the rear is about six inches higher. You can see how much lower that jack point is than the front, but it is on all four wheels for the first time <laughs> in over a year, which is crazy. I swapped out the old solid subframe bushings for some SLR solid subframe bushings, which look amazing. Got the rear Tech 53 dual drilled hubs on with the BMW Motorsports studs. <sighs> Man, this is a big, Freaking step. I'm so damn happy. Freaking Barney Mobile. It's all good. You ain't gonna see this stuff when the when it's on the ground, but look at how beautiful this looks. Let's get some B-roll. Oh, also I forgot to show you. Eight o'clock this morning. 
I mounted up my reservoirs on the front bash bar towers, which came out freaking awesome. I actually used a hose clamp with some wirecare.com heat shrink on it and these polyflex mounts. They're like hard rubber that I got, got off Amazon, but this looks sick. I'm freaking pumped and it's symmetrical. All right, B-roll time, baby. I think that's gonna be it for this video. Car is on all four wheels. It is officially a roller. Brakes, some other random stuff should be here this week. Then we have full fuel system to do, full brake system to do, and then that doesn't even get into the drivetrain yet. So we have engine, trans, rear diff, full wiring, seats, dash, body panels. There is, this is just the tip of the iceberg. So I hope you guys are excited for it um, because I'm gonna document it. Once again, I'm super happy this thing's on all four wheels finally, and can't wait to dial it in and get another system checked off. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you in a couple days.